Today, I'm at the 30th anniversary celebration of the company's founding with my family. My wife, Clara, has just given birth and gained a bit of weight postpartum. As soon as I introduced my wife to Mr. Flint, the department head, he burst into laughter. I thought you were a sumo wrestler. Shall I bring salt for you to throw? Mr. Flint's voice echoed through the celebration venue. Clara looked down, embarrassed, but at that moment, Mr. Flint didn't know who Clara really was. Soon after, he would start trembling. My name is Ethan, and I'm 35 years old. Currently, it's just Clara and me living together. I work in the sales department of a major machinery manufacturer, and this year marks my 17th year of service. Due to my job, I meet new people every day, and although it's busy, it's fulfilling and fun. I met Clara at work. She was working in sales administration. A quiet woman, five years younger than me, but the first time I saw Clara, I felt a jolt through my body like an electric shock. It was love at first sight for me. I was the one who spoke to her first, but Clara was more outgoing than I thought, and she was fun to be around. I gathered my courage and confessed to Clara, and we started dating. From there, things progressed smoothly, and before I knew it, we were married. Life with Clara is truly enjoyable. Every day, Clara is a great cook and makes my favourite dishes. Then one day, Clara spoke to me with a serious look on her face. Ethan, I think I'm pregnant. Upon hearing Clara's words, I jumped for joy. Clara, I'm so happy. Thank you. I've always loved children, and becoming a father was my dream. This might be due to my childhood environment. I lost my parents when I was young and grew up in an orphanage. Because of that, there were always younger children around me. They were all like little brothers and sisters to me, and more than anything, they were precious to me. As I helped raise these younger children, I gradually grew to love kids even more. I've told Clara everything, and she knows how much I love children. I'm so glad you're happy, Clara said, and then she started to cry. I have, Clara. After a while, Clara's morning sickness began. At first, we laughed it off as a sign of the baby being there. But then the morning sickness became so severe that it was no laughing matter. Clara was experiencing pregnancy cravings, which she found helped reduce nausea. Originally thin and slender, she gained about 22 pounds due to these cravings, prompting the doctor to issue a warning. I would buy healthy ingredients on my way home from work and give them to Clara. You wouldn't want a wife this bad, would you? Clara looked at me sadly. I love you no matter what, Clara. It was the truth. There's probably no one else who thinks of me as much as Clara does, and to me, she's irreplaceable. I was even more determined to work hard for Clara and our baby, but that determination was easily shattered. As usual, when I went to work in the morning, the workplace was noisy. Curious, I decided to ask my colleague, Miss Carter, what's going on? Director Osaki seems to have collapsed at home yesterday. I don't know the details, but it looks like we'll have a reliever from another branch starting today. I was surprised to hear Miss Carter's words. Director Osaki was so energetic that he used to boast that his health was his only strong point. It was shocking to hear that such a person had collapsed. While I was in shock, the executive director came into the sales department with a man. The appearance of the executive director made all my colleagues go quiet. Then the executive director began to speak. As you're aware, Osaki had a minor heart attack at home yesterday. He's chosen to retire, making this a transition period for us. As a result, Mr. Flint will step in as the new director. Your support for him would be greatly appreciated. Everyone listened intently to what the executive director had to say. The man with the executive director began to look around and started to greet us. 
From now on, I'll be the head of this department. I'm going to be, so I'm counting on you all. Everyone responded to Director Flint's words all at once. It was sad that Director Osaki was not around, but it couldn't be helped. I decided to do my best under the new director. That's when it happened. Director Flint suddenly came to my desk. So you, Ethan, I've heard about your good sales performance, even from the branch, but you're a high school graduate, right? I believe all high school graduates amount to nothing. I couldn't believe my ears. High school graduates amount to nothing. What does that even mean? My colleagues also look surprised. Since you can't possibly be good at sales, you're a bust. By from today. I couldn't accept being dismissed by someone I had just met. Sure, I'm a high school graduate, but I've always worked harder than anyone else. I've been working in the sales department for over 17 years, and I can do sales just even as a high school graduate. As I argued back, Director Flint's face turned redder. He seemed to be getting angry. How do you talk back to me? You'll be a bust for life. If you don't like it, you can quit. I was shaking with anger. I faced hard times in my life, but this was the worst. But if I argued back now, it would jeopardize the future of Clara and our unborn child. With that thought, I started doing the janitorial work as Director Flint had ordered, trying to suppress my anger. Ethan, I'll help you. Miss Carter offered to help me, worried. But Director Flint shouted, Hey, Ethan, don't drag other people into this. This is why I hate high school graduates. Reluctantly, I ended up doing everything by myself. I couldn't understand why Director Flint was targeting me like this. Finally, when it was time to leave and I was getting ready to go home, Miss Carter approached me. It was a tough day, wasn't it? I'm sorry I couldn't help. Miss Carter spoke to me with an apologetic look. It's okay. I think Director Flint just doesn't like that I'm a high school graduate, I replied. Miss Carter nodded to my words. It's sad, but that might be true. Actually, Director Osaki was also a high school graduate, and he and Director Flint joined the company at the same time. But when it came time to choose a director, they chose Osaki, who was a high school graduate over Flint, who was a college graduate. Since then, he seems to have had a grudge against high school graduates. So, that was the past. But Director Osaki was a wonderful person who always arrived at work before anyone else and was always considerate of his subordinates. Perhaps the company chose people based on their character rather than their educational background like high school or college degree. It's ridiculous to target high school graduates. I could only sigh when I arrived in front of my house. I forced a smile. I didn't want to worry Clara, who was pregnant. But when I entered the house, Clara looked at me with a concerned face. You look even more tired than usual today. Are you okay? Clara sees right through me. Yeah, I'm just tired from some new tasks at work. I said and escaped to the bathroom before Clara could catch on. While in the bath, I reminded myself that now was the time to work hard. I had trouble falling asleep that night. The next morning, when I woke up and went to the living room, a pleasant aroma greeted me. The dining table was laden with a breakfast, so luxurious it was hard to believe it was just breakfast. Noticing me, Clara smiled and said, I woke up early, so I made some things you'd like to eat. Enjoy whatever you like. Miss Carter nodded. I couldn't believe that Director Flint, who looked down on me for being a high school graduate, would ask me to organize documents. Reluctantly, I stood up and took the pile of documents from Director Flint's desk. The amount was unusually large. I doubted whether he was really doing his job properly. I began organizing the documents right away. Then, just after eleven o'clock, Director Flint came in yawning, holding coffee and a bagel from a famous coffee chain. 
As soon as he arrived, he started eating the bagel. Everyone in the office couldn't hide their surprise and quietly watched him. Feeling my anger about to peak, I went to Director Flint's desk with the documents I finished organising. I'll leave them here, I said. As I said that, Director Flint suddenly raised his voice. I'm having breakfast. How dare a subordinate interrupt me like this? Do high school graduates not understand? My body trembled with anger again. This boss is indescribably terrible. Thinking it was a waste of time to deal with him, I tried to return to my desk. Then, Director Flint, while sipping his coffee, yelled even louder, Hey, you must be free, right? Organize these documents too, and these meeting materials as well. All of that is Director Flint's work. Surprised, I silently accepted the documents. Director Flint was just laughing. Returning to my desk, Miss Carter whispered angrily, that's Director Flint's job, not yours. Why do you have to do it? I'll say something. She was about to stand up, seemingly ready to confront Director Flint. I desperately stopped Miss Carter. Miss Carter, if you say something like that, you could get fired. I'm fine, really. As I said that, Miss Carter started working again, clearly unsatisfied. I didn't want to involve others because of me. Frustrated, I organised the documents as Director Flint had ordered. Even after that, Director Flint would frequently show up late to work or take days off, claiming he was using up his paid leave each time. I was forced to do the work that Director Flint was supposed to do. Instead, I no longer had the energy to talk back and just did as I was told. However, an incident happened suddenly on the day of an important meeting. As soon as the meeting was over, Director Flint came out of the meeting room in a rage. He headed straight for my desk and started yelling at me. What is this document? It's full of nonsense. I was confused and didn't understand what he was talking about. Um, I just organised the documents as you instructed, Director Flint. Cutting off my words, Director Flint continued to yell at me. This document... It's different from what I instructed. A high school graduate's blind mind because of you. I was embarrassed. Indeed, the document was created exactly as Director Flint had instructed. He was supposed to create it himself, but I ended up making it for him. Now he's blaming his mistake on his subordinate. That's the worst thing someone could do. I was so shocked I couldn't say anything more. Then Miss Carter, who had been watching, ran out of patience and stepped forward. She glared at Director Flint and said, Director Flint, you were the one who instructed Ed to make the document like this, right? Encouraged by Miss Carter, other colleagues also chimed in. Indeed we saw it too, Director Flint. You were the one who gave those instructions, weren't you? Then... Director Flint coughed lightly and started to look embarrassed. So, so what? It was my mistake to rely on a high school graduate. Next time, I'll leave it to a college graduate, saying that Director Flint left the sales department. Then Miss Carter and other colleagues gathered around me. Ah, that felt refreshing. Did you see Director Flint's face? Hilarious. Everyone said, standing by my side. I've never felt as supported by Miss Carter and my colleagues as I did today. I felt fortunate to work with such people. But since that incident, Director Flint's attitude towards me has gotten worse day by day. Hey, where's my coffee? Ah, coffee, Director said. Hey, trivial tasks on me. Don't make me say it again. It's the coffee understood. When I brought the coffee as Director Flint had ordered, he deliberately spilled it. Oh, now I can't drink my coffee. Bring me another cup. My colleagues were stunned. Director Flint's behaviour was beyond normal. It was like that of a child. I sighed and went to make another cup of coffee. In this way, 
Director Flint looked down on me in every possible way, deciding I was worthless. Exhausted by these days, I had become like a servant to the director without realising it. One day, after about six months of this routine, I received a call during work. It was from Clara, who was pregnant. I rushed to answer the phone. Then Clara said she was starting labour and was on her way to the hospital. I promptly informed Director Flint, who was sneering, that I needed to leave early. And then I left the company. I hurried to the hospital. Upon arrival, I was led to the delivery room where I saw Clara holding our newly born baby boy. He looked just like me. He was so adorable. I truly understood what they mean when they say you're so cute, I could just eat you up, Clara. Thank you for giving birth to a healthy baby, I said and hugged Clara. We named the baby Noah. Looking at Noah's face, I made a decision. It was to take paternity leave. It wouldn't be good for Clara's health to let her do all the childcare so soon after giving birth. I wanted to do what I could as a father. Is it really okay for you to do that? Clara asked me worriedly. But I was firm in my decision. The next day, I went to the company with heavy steps. Upon arrival, I declared to Director Flint, my wife has given birth, so I'm taking paternity leave. Director Flint's face gradually turned into a scowl. Paternity leave? What are you talking about? It's just for three weeks. The company policy states that male employees can take paternity leave, so please proceed with the necessary paperwork. Director Flint seemed like he wanted to say something, but the moment I mentioned company policy, he quieted down. I officially took three weeks of paternity leave. When I returned home and told Clara, she was relieved. I was really nervous about taking care of the baby alone for the first time, but knowing you'll be here makes me feel safe. Let's do our best together. I spoke to Clara while holding crying Noah. During the day, Clara took care of Noah, and at night, it was my turn. Noah was a baby who drank a lot of milk and cried a lot. It was challenging day and night, honestly more so than work, but the happiness of being involved in childcare was indescribable. I did my best to ensure that my little Noah could live comfortably. As the three weeks of paternity leave were about to fly by, I received a call from Miss Carter. There's a celebration for the company's 30th anniversary at the hotel this Sunday. You and your family are coming, right? I remember Director Flint mentioning the celebration before, but Director Flint would surely attend the celebration as well. I was in a dilemma. Is it okay for me to attend while on paternity leave? Has Director Flint said anything? Over the phone, Miss Carter said, of course, it's okay. And Director Flint hasn't said anything. We all want to see Ethan's baby, so please do come. Encouraged by Miss Carter's words, I found myself saying, then I'll come, and hung up. Thinking it over, I started to feel anxious about my decision. I didn't know what Director Flint would say when I saw him, but I also felt the desire to introduce Noah and Clara to my colleagues. My feelings were mixed. Clara, there's a 30th anniversary celebration for the company this weekend. Would you like to come with me? Clara was silent for a moment, her expression as uneasy as mine. What's wrong? Don't you want to go? Do you think you'd be embarrassed with the way I look now? Clara looked sad. She hadn't lost the weight she gained during pregnancy and was a bit plump, but to me, Clara was attractive no matter what. Clara, you're always beautiful. My words made Clara smile happily. Thank you. If we're going, I need to prepare what to wear. Seeing Clara's smile return made me happy. On the day of the celebration, I dressed in a suit for the first time in a while. Looking over at Clara, she was wearing a navy blue dress. The dress accentuated Clara's charm. Clara, that dress looks great on you. Clara blushed as she dressed Noah. 
Thanks for the compliment, but don't expect anything in return. Clara made a playful face. We got into the car and headed to the hotel for the venue. The hotel, known as a prestigious establishment, was a place neither Clara nor I had ever entered. Inside, there was a large sparkling chandelier and luxurious sofas were lined up. We passed through the lobby, took the elevator, and entered the designated large room where a lavish meal was laid out and colleagues had already gathered. Wow, this is my first time at a celebration like this. Clara was marvelling with wide eyes. Noah, being held, looked around curiously. Then we were approached from behind. It was Miss Carter. Ethan, long time no see. Oh my, how adorable. Miss Carter was captivated by Noah. This is my wife, Clara, and our son, Noah. It's a pleasure to meet you, Clara greeted her, and Miss Carter smiled, saying, Ethan, your wife is so beautiful. Take good care of her. Miss Carter held Noah, showering him with affection. I looked around, thinking I should greet Director Flint if he was here. However, I couldn't spot him yet. I then spoke to Clara. Go ahead and get some food. I'll watch Noah. The food here is all exquisite. Let's go together. The meal was buffet style, where we could eat as much as we liked. I wanted Clara to enjoy the celebration as much as possible, as she always put Noah and me first. Clara happily said, thank you. I'll be right back, and headed to the food area with Miss Carter. Noah started to fuss a bit when he realised Clara was gone. Recently, Noah has started crying whenever Clara isn't around. It's probably part of growing up, but it makes me a bit sad. Once Noah starts crying, it's hard to calm him down. So I decided to take him for a walk around the venue to keep him from crying. Then someone called out to me from behind. Ah, if it isn't Ethan, the nuisance who took paternity leave. It was Director Flint. As usual, he had nothing but snide remarks for me. I stood my ground and spoke to Director Flint. Thanks to the paternity leave, I've been able to participate in my son's care. Thank you for that. When I thanked him, Director Flint visibly grimaced. Childcare is normally the mother's job, isn't it? Your leave has made us all busier. Only a high school graduate wouldn't understand that. I was astonished at Director Flint's male chauvinistic attitude. Being single, he probably doesn't understand the difficulties of parenting. I sighed. I'll be returning to work next week, so I look forward to your cooperation. Trying to keep my irritation in check, I said this to Director Flint, who then burst into laughter and said something shocking. I got rid of your desk because it was in the way. There won't be a place for you when you return. I was stunned. Was he telling me not to come back to work? Just as anger was about to take over, Clara and Miss Carter returned. Clara looked puzzled, probably having overheard a bit of my conversation with Director Flint. I introduced Clara to Director Flint. This is my wife, Clara. Director Flint then burst out laughing loudly. I thought she was a sumo wrestler. Shall I bring salt for you to throw? I was frozen. Clara, who had been self-conscious about her post-pregnancy weight, was mortified by his insensitive remark. She looked down, completely embarrassed. I couldn't hold back any longer. Flint, can't you grasp what's appropriate for your age? Even a high school graduate like me understands it. You're less mature than a high schooler. Director Flint was taken aback by my words. He hadn't expected me to stand up to him. The next moment, with his face turning red, Director Flint raised his voice so it echoed throughout the venue. Shut up. I was only telling the truth. There's no way I'm less than a high school graduate. All eyes in the venue turned towards us. Miss Carter looked at Director Flint with anger. That's when it happened. A couple walked towards us. What's all the noise about? Director Flint suddenly became meek and started making a big smile to the man. 
I'm terribly sorry for the disturbance, Mr. Hawthorne. It's wonderful to see you and your wife together, as always such a lovely couple. Today is a special celebration for the anniversary of the company's founding, so I brought my wife along. The man was Mr. Hawthorne, the president of a client company. Mrs. Hawthorne smiled gracefully. The next moment, Mr. Hawthorne looked towards Clara. Clara, how have you been? And Noah has gotten so big, Mr. Hawthorne smiled warmly at Noah. Clara, quickly replied Mr. Hawthorne, it's been a while. We're doing well, thank you. Then Director Flint exclaimed in surprise, what? You know each other. Director Flint had a look of disbelief at what was unfolding before him. Know each other. Clara is the daughter of the president of this company, didn't you know that? Director Flint's face went pale. Yes, Clara is indeed the daughter of the president of the company I work for. I had no idea she was the president's daughter when we were dating. I remember being speechless from shock when I saw Clara's father's face during our marriage introduction. I had never imagined Clara was the president's daughter. Clara had always been treated specially because she was the president's daughter. Many of the people she dated before were only after her for her money and didn't truly love her. That's why Clara started dating me without revealing her true identity. I love Clara, whether she's the president's daughter or not. Then, as the entrance became noisy, the president entered the venue and approached Clara. Mr. Hawthorne, thank you for taking the trouble to come. Not at all. It's an important business partner, and I'm very satisfied to see Clara's baby, Mr. Hawthorne laughed, looking at Director Flint. The president said, Thanks to Director Flint approving the paternity leave, Ethan has been able to help with childcare. I think Clara has been greatly relieved, Mr. Hawthorne continued, looking at Director Flint, paternity leave is essential for men too. We're planning to introduce it in our company soon. Director Flint, with an embarrassed look, replied in a weak voice, yes, that's right. Mr. Hawthorne smiled warmly at Clara. I can't believe the little Clara has grown into such a beautiful woman and now a mother. She is a beautiful woman, making Ethan a lucky man indeed. Director Flint, changing his tune, began to compliment Clara on her beauty. I was speechless in surprise. Just a while ago, he had treated Clara like a sumo wrestler, and now he was too opportunistic. I was dismayed at Director Flint. Then Clara raised her voice. Director Flint, you thought I was a sumo wrestler just a while ago, didn't you? Director Flint froze at Clara's words. The president looked concerned. That was a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. So clearing Ethan's desk because it was in the way was also a misunderstanding. What, Director Flint? What does that mean? That was also a misunderstanding. The venue suddenly became quiet. Then Miss Carter appeared with an angry expression. Mr. President, Director Flint has been doing as he pleases in the sales department, looking down on Ethan because he's a high school graduate. He's been treating our excellent Ethan like a busboy. The president was shaking with anger. Clara looked at me and Director Flint in disbelief. That's all lies. Please don't listen to such nonsense. Director Flint glared at Miss Carter. Then colleagues from the sales department also spoke up. What Miss is saying is true. The one lying is Director Flint. Director Flint seemingly resigned, looked down dejected. Then the president raised his voice. Director Flint, it seems you are not suitable for this company. I will inform you of your punishment later. Such, such a thing. Director Flint trembled and sat down on the spot. The president used the microphone to say, today is our company's 30th anniversary celebration, everyone. Let's drink, eat and have fun. With the president's words as a signal, liveliness returned to the venue. 
Clara and I ignored Director Flint, who was sitting down, and enjoyed the celebration. Before we knew it, Director Flint had disappeared from the venue. Afterward, Director Flint was demoted and received a three-month salary reduction due to his behaviour towards subordinates coming to light. However, with his high pride, Director Flint disliked working in the same position as me and gradually stopped coming to the company, eventually opting to resign voluntarily. On Director Flint's last day at the office, not a single person saw him off, and the sight of him leaving the company was truly pitiable. Director Flint's foolishness, judging people only by their appearance or educational background, led to this outcome. Director Ethan, please check these documents. Being called a director still feels awkward, so please call me by my name like before. Can the document check wait until tomorrow? I have an important matter to attend to today. Of course today is Noah's birthday, isn't it? Yes, today is the important first birthday of Noah. I hurried out of the company and went home. At home, Clara and Noah were waiting for me with beaming smiles. I thought to myself that I would continue to cherish and nurture this family. Finally, we have concluded that the story unfolds with Ethan attending the company's 30th anniversary celebration, shortly after his wife Clara has given birth to their son Noah. At the event, they encounter Director Flint, who makes an insensitive comment about Clara's post-pregnancy weight, comparing her to a sumo wrestler. This incident escalates tensions between Ethan and Director Flint, who already has a history of disrespecting Ethan for being a high school graduate and for taking paternity leave. Director Flint's disdain for Ethan is evident when he tells Ethan that his desk has been removed, implying Ethan sh should not return to work. The situation takes a significant turn when Mr. Hawthorne, a client company's president and Clara's father, arrives at the celebration. Mr. Hawthorne's presence and his warm greeting to Clara and Noah reveal Clara's true identity as the daughter of the company president. Unknown to Director Flint, the revelation leads to Director Flint's embarrassment and eventual downfall after being confronted by Ethan Clara and their colleagues for his behaviour and poor treatment of Ethan. Director Flint is demoted and receives a salary reduction despite these consequences. Director Flint's pride leads him to resign. In the end, Ethan, who has been promoted to Director Flint's position, reflects on his journey and the importance of family. The story concludes with Ethan celebrating Noah's first birthday, emphasising the themes of family resilience and the downfall of arrogance and prejudice. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next story.